I've been dying to to come on the last 10 minutes. I'm like, can I come on? <laughs> can I come on yet? I'm so excited to see so many people here already. I'll be watching the chat. Welcome, welcome. If you're able to take off your um, your block on your camera, I would love to see your beautiful faces. I see Kimber, some new friends, Poonam, Frida, Bridget, Sarah. I'm trying to take all this energy in right now. I'm so excited to, to be here. Oh, Melissa, awesome. People are, are dedicated. They're at work and they're still coming on. I love that. Uh, great. Jenna, is Jenna Let's making your sweet faces. rolls? Are you making sweet Yeah, Jenna, what do you do? Are you going all the way up? <laughs> Yeah, I'm actually, I'm making lotion today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> very nice. I'm, I'm curious to see, let, let's get some, uh, I know it's 6 a.m. on the West Coast. Let's see who, who is that dedicated that they're on this call right now. Do we have any West Coast people? Oh, Victoria, look at you. Melissa, yes. So it's 6, 12 a.m. over by, <laughs> wow, you guys are dedicated. I really, and Probably, I know Melissa has a, a, a boy, so you guys sound like you don't have kids or anything. You, you're juggling multiple things, Arizona. Welcome, welcome. Well, um, I just wanna say from the bottom of my heart, this, this summit uh, really means so much to me to have the, the platform, the space to not only myself share about other ways that you can heal and release any kind of stress that you might be having. Or, um, you know, if, if you want to stay in pharmacy and that's where you want to be, you know, we want to provide you with these healing tools to help you calm your nervous system, to be able to have more energy. And so you're going to get so much out of, you know, the speakers and, you know, this whole weekend. And, and also for people who are wanting to start your own business and you want that freedom and flexibility, you know, that really has a place in my heart because I know what it's like to be a burnt out pharmacist and to go from, you know, being on the front lines in pharmacy, you know, I quit my job back in 2019 to creating this seven figure business that, you know, I've done over 10 years, but I want to be an inspiration to those people because I know what it's like to be, feel like you're stuck and like you can't get out of that situation where you're maybe a retail pharmacist, a hospital pharmacist, but you know you have gifts inside of you. If that is you, you are absolutely on the right summit. And I can't wait to share with you all of the, the magic that all of these other women have um, going on. So Todd, let's, let's talk a little bit about this whole, you know, pizza is not working. Let's, let's just have a quick dialogue about that. Yes, um, uh, Dr. Bled to know out of Oklahoma, um, experienced herself in in community uh, chain pharmacy environment that the metrics didn't equal the care that should be being provided by a pharmacist, nor the time to even counsel patients. That was level number one. Level number two is they were exhausted. They didn't have lunch breaks. They're not having any time to, um, to go to the bathroom. Um, that was level number two. Level three, which was much more serious, was an issue um, which we – don't mention names, but it's obviously very public information, and Bled has always just asked us to keep it um, to just uh, telling the story overall, and that is a pharmacist was, um, was feeling uh, very ill, very sick, and wanted to go to the hospital and notified their regional manager that they were leaving to go, and they told them to wait until uh, relief was there. Uh, she obeyed that command, and she passed away. So pizza is not working. Hashtag pizza is not working. If you Google that, you'll find tons of information on this campaign. Is really an effort to go to the board of pharmacies, the state um, pharmacy associations, and and truly inform our politicians and lawmakers and policymakers and the board of pharmacy themselves that we must come up with some kind of metric that keeps our public safe by keeping our pharmacists safe and keeping our pharmacists. Um, not uh, exhausted and burn out and um, and stop focusing on the profit of the prescription and start focusing on the, the meaning in which is healthcare and um, the betterment of of our communities. So it's a huge effort is making way. Uh, Oklahoma and two other states have already implemented some uh, first level changes to uh, work work balance. Um, and so I want everyone to be educated in what is pizza is not working so that you understand. This is part of coming to an event like this where 
uh, Christina has honed in on by doing it over and over and over again. She's honed in on an entire process to really help us declutter the mind and kind of take a step back and, and recharge yourself. Focus on yourself. Christina has taught me that I need to focus more on myself in order to deliver what I want to to my most favorite providers, which is our pharmacists. So if I don't care for me, if I don't care for Todd, I'm not going to be able to care about the people I love the most in healthcare, which is my pharmacist. So Christina, I thank you for that. Oh, you're so sweet. And you said that, I uh, thank you for just going over the history of, you know, pizza's not working. And so um, just, you know me, I'm going to be raw and real. So the reason for this summit is because I, one day I posted in a large pharmacy group, this was a couple months ago. And I was just asking, I'm like, you know, who here is an empath? How do you deal? Like, I just wanted to get a pulse of how people were dealing with the stress of, you know, being a pharmacist. And a lot of people were commenting, I, I must have gotten 300 comments on my my post. And then people were asking for resources and my post got taken down. So I that lit a fire in me and it made me want to create my own platform with these other women because we need tools. If you're going to stay in pharmacy and you know I, I get it, there's that financial security, there's the, you know, a lot of you have families and, and things that you have to do. And you can also use these tools to take care of yourself, to calm your nervous system, to reduce stress whenever you can with these different tools. I'm going to teach you, you know, three things that you can do right away in my talk coming up in a couple of minutes. And my goal is to really empower you to know that, yes, you know, we're working on this initiative, pizza's not working. That can take a little bit longer. What can we do right now to empower ourselves to feel better? to you know, set healthy boundaries where we can, to create our own businesses. If you have something inside of you that is, that is pulling you to this event, you're gonna get so much information and so many ideas that are gonna spark things in you that I encourage you not only to think about it, but to really take action because that's one of my key uh, reasons why I've had the success that I have is because everything, like I, I got this download and I just went with it, right? I didn't think about it. I was like, okay, we're doing this. And now look at, look at the, the platform that we've created here. And so a lot of people, uh, you know, fear is a big thing. You know, I'm in my transformation business coaching. I work with women a lot with these blocks. You know, you're going to hear me talk a lot about blocks and fear of you know, fear of shining and, you know, we're programmed to stay small and safe. And so I'm going to go into a little bit about my story and, and why I'm so passionate about this, because I was small. I was kept small my entire life. You know, my dad was a pharmacist. Like Todd said, I grew up in his independent pharmacy, sweeping floors, helping old, older ladies with finding, you know, cards for their granddaughters or whatever they needed. And I started from the ground up. I started probably sweeping. I was pretty much born at the pharmacy, right? At, my dad was like, get, get the broom. You're five years old. It's time to get started working. And so I grew up in that environment, but my dad was a very strong Italian dad. And, you know, for those of you, I know Nina's on here or anybody else who has had a really strong parent, you know, I was suppressed a lot. I, you know, a lot of us can relate to this good girl syndrome, right? Where you were told, you know, just, oh, sit down and, and look nice and look pretty and, and, and just, put your head down. And that's what we do as pharmacists, right? A lot of the time we can't speak up. We can't speak out because then we'll get in trouble or we'll get a, a write-up or we'll get fired. And so entrepreneurship is really the opposite of that. It's allowing yourself to be heard. It's giving yourself a voice. It's allowing yourself to use your gifts that you were born with, the experiences that you've had to create a heart-centered business. And so that's why I'm wearing this, the hearts right now, this, you know, I know it's around Valentine's day, but that's the reason why is because we have so many as pharmacists, you're so educated. And yet we say, I need, um, it's not enough. I need another certification. I need da, 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 because we're so left brain. And so what I want you to, to think about as you move through the summit is to just kind of try things on. I'm going to be sharing some things that you might be like, I don't know what this girl's talking about. 
but just be open. That's the one thing I'll say as we start the summit, just be open to some of the things like you're just trying on a new sweater. Like, Oh, do I like this? Yeah, cool. Okay. I'll, I'll implement that in my life. And if you don't, that's cool too. So just giving a little bit of background of why, you know, I, I wanted to create the summit and then I just kind of put it out there. I said, okay, who, who are the healers? Who are the, the facilitators of healing that are also pharmacists that I want on my team? And I, you know, Bridget, Jenna, Sarah, I mean, all these people that you're going to see over, um, oh, Lisa, I'll go back to the chat too. I do see some people posting, you know, these women, I, I hope that everybody got to see a lot of the PowerPoint. I'm going to be highlighting their brilliance because I can't do this alone. And it's, it's way bigger than me. It's, you know, people like Todd, um, Rachel, all the people that created this event, it's so much bigger than than any of us. And so we need each other. So thank you for being here. Thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come and listen to all these amazing speakers. We have so many great things lined up for you here. So why did your post get taken down? Okay. So Lisa, I would challenge you if your fear of being seen, I'm going to, I'm going to do a little coaching here. I want to see your face on there, your beautiful face. If you could take your camera off. So my post got taken down because Oh, because I was commenting with free resources, like people wanted, they were saying like, oh, how do you deal with X? And I would say, go check out this video on my YouTube channel, go check out my podcast on imposter syndrome. And so it got taken down and I get that to an extent, you know, um, you don't want promotion in your group, but I'm the type of person I'm like, well, we're going to, I'm going to do it myself. <laughs> like we're going to have build a platform you know, we're calling this the RX healing in pharmacy because healing is needed in pharmacy. And Blair Telemeyer, you know, posted about this on, on LinkedIn. And it's so true. We sacrifice our own health to help other people be healthy. And it's insane. So that's really what, you know, I'm feeling like 2022 is this opportunity, you know, with everything that's being piled on. I have a lot of, you know, pharmacist clients that are still in community wanting to transition out community retail pharmacy. And they just say with COVID, the vaccines, it's so much. And there's only so much your, your body, your energy can handle. And so we're going to teach you some quick things that you can do. Lisa, I'm going to keep harping on you to, to un <laughs> I want to see your face. Anybody who I can see planning to turn up after I'm done eating. Oh, we could see you eating. It's all good. Um, anybody who has questions, um, just some housekeeping. You can post it in the chat and then we're going to have a panel discussion after each round. So we're going to do four speakers and then Rachel will do the first panel discussion. She's going to facilitate that. So any questions that you have for the speakers or even for me, go ahead, post it in the chat and Rachel will make sure to, to get that all set for us. So I want to first just acknowledge Todd Yuri. You know, <laughs> I knew Todd when did I, so I moved to Pittsburgh. I was engaged before and, you know, he's so nice that he's, he's not going to say I was with my fiance at the time on uh, the Pittsburgh post Gazette. And he saw me and we just connected back in 2016. And I've seen Todd grow tremendously and, you know, everything that yeah. he does to really champion pharmacists. If you are, you know, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're just wanting to connect with someone who is like the, he calls himself the Ryan Seacrest, the pharmacy, <laughs> go, like go with him. I just, I really want to acknowledge you for just not only the, what you do for pharmacists, but the friend that you've been to me and just how selflessly you give to everybody. So I just want to celebrate you. Thank you. First I, and foremost. I saw you, when I saw you in the Post Gazette, I wasn't looking at your uh, fiance, <laughs> looking at you on the, on the yellow bridge. <laughs> You're like, he wasn't there. <laughs> he wasn't Good. even there. Actually, yeah. I superimposed him with, with, uh, with Mickey uh, Mouse. Yeah, no, with me. I've been, I'm like this, oh. I'm on the bridge <laughs> with my U.S. Farmy shirt on. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So thank you, Todd. And, and for my assistant, Rachel. So that beautiful PDF that you saw that everybody's like, oh my God, this thing, that was her. So she's the one I'm like, hey, let's do this. Let's just really like, I, I could cry just with how much I, I love her. And, you know, we're starting off with her interview first. So I'm excited for that, but just, she is my rock. She has helped create this whole, like 
we just co-create things together. I'm like, I want to do a retreat. She's like, okay, let's go. <laughs> we just go off together. So um, thank you for that. And, and to all the summit speakers, I really just appreciate everything that you've shared, the gifts that you bring. Um, I'm so excited to, to highlight you. So, so yeah, let's get started. I, I want to give direct value to you right away, things that you can implement right in your business. It, even if you don't have a business right away, no matter where you are, I want to be able to add value to your life right away. Um, so I'm going to be talking about the game-changing transformation tools to release old patterns, keeping you stuck. So again, just a little bit about my story. You know, I had said before, I grew up in, in an Italian family where, you know, I, I was told that, you know, to look pretty, to sit down and, and not to, I wasn't allowed to cry. I wasn't allowed to express myself. So I suppressed my emotions for a really long time. I suppressed my desires for who, for what I wanted for my life. And so I put on this masculine mask that I was independent, like, oh no, I'm good. I got it. And the way that I got love was through achieving. So I got straight A's. I was top 10 in my high school class. I went to pharmacy school. I did all the things because what I really wanted that I wasn't getting was love. And so that's how I got it. I got praise from dad, from mom through achieving. And I know a lot of us can relate to that. And so, you know, as I was going throughout pharmacy school, you know, I knew I was like, I want to help people. I knew that was something in my heart. I felt it in my heart whenever I was working at my dad's pharmacy. And then I got to my fifth year of pharmacy school. And I said to myself, I'm like, I don't want to go into retail. I don't want to follow down the path. My sister worked at my dad's pharmacy. My mom was the, like the technician, I guess you could say. Um, and it was a very kind of toxic environment to work in to begin with. But I knew in my heart and got, that was really when like, you know, and when I say God, you, you enter, you can interject whatever synonym you want, source, spirit, whatever you believe, but I'm going to use the word God. So God came and, and touched my heart I, and said to me, you're meant for more. And so I was scared because I had never had another job before. I had never gone on an interview, but I went and applied for residency and my family was really mad. My dad's, my dad thought that I was betraying them, that you know, I was like, he couldn't even look me in the eye. You know, I was living at home at the time and I had an eating disorder. I would wake up every day, every night and binge, you know, I would restrict my calories during the day and then I would wake up and binge. So I was in these vicious cycles of anxiety and a lot of shame around my desire again, right? Because I wasn't allowed to express my true desire of wanting to do something different because I was always like the black sheep of the family. I was I'm the youngest, you know, my sister's a pharmacist. She followed and, and like stayed in the lines and followed everything that my dad wanted. My brother was kind of a little bit of a rebel. He's in, in like technology and IT. And then there's me and I'm like this, this soul that has, a, yeah, I know that I have a big purpose. And so I went through the, the process of trying to get a residency. I didn't get any of my, my matches. You know, when you go through the match process, I applied for five, I got none of them. So I was like, crap, now what do I do? <laughs> so one of my professors at St. John's uh, University, which is where my alma mater is in Queens, I'm originally from New York, if you couldn't tell by my accent, it's like a little bit there, but I've been here in Pittsburgh for six years, so it might've faded away. <laughs> but um, so anyway, I went through and, and I, the scramble and I wound up getting a, a residency at a community pharmacy residency. Well. The day after I got it, I was, you know, I had gone to my friend's house. We were studying for a pharmacy exam and my mom starts texting me and she's like, you know, um, now you can leave your fucked up family and like, you know, good for you. Now you're leaving us like just hateful messages. And for like, if you know, if you were to know my mom, she's the sweetest person, but they were just really hurt. And so I woke up the next day. I was still, I slept over at my friend's house. And she's like, you better come get all your stuff because I'm throwing it out onto the lawn. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm getting kicked out of my house right now. So I go home, all of my clothes, all of my belongings, she's taking hangers out of the closet, throwing it out onto, onto the lawn. The neighbors are probably like, what the hell is going on over there? And I'm just sitting there. 
and it was my rock bottom moment. I'm like, oh my God, I, I had to gather my things up in clear leaf bags and go over my aunt's house to try to like fold everything up. Cause I had this tiny Mazda three. It, it was like this, you know, it was a sedan, it was tiny. So I had to vacuum seal up all my clothes and put them in my car. And I'm like, where am I going to sleep tonight? That's where I was at, at that, at that moment. And so luckily, you know, I, I had a bridge of two weeks where I was living out of my car, but I had, I had access to sleep in like a bed and I, you know, had access to a shower and things like that through one of my friends. She was like a peripheral friend that I knew, but you know, it was at that moment that I could have folded and been like, all right, like, I'll do what you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll come back. I'll come back because it's safe, right? Your home is the ultimate safety. It's the ultimate security. But I was like, fuck it. I'm like, I'm, I've come this far. Like, I'm just going to keep going. So I, um, at that point, I was right about to graduate pharmacy school. I still had to take two exams. I was about to start my residency and I'm, I'm homeless. I'm like, fuck, what am I going to do? <laughs> so like, you know, gradually I, I got a job. I got fired from my dad's pharmacy. I had no job. I had no place to live. I was living out of my car. I was, you know, all of these things were going on and it was kind of like the unraveling of my old life. And for any of you who have ever been through a divorce, a health crisis, something that really just shook you to the core, then you get where I was at at that time. Cause it was really, it was a lot. And it definitely caused a lot of, you know, PTSD um, so I was at my rock bottom and a lot of things in my life weren't working at that time. Like I said, I had an eating disorder. Um, at that time I was attracting men that abused me because I abused myself and, you know, I, I had been abused by my dad. And so it was continuing these vicious cycles. And so that is really why I love working with pharmacists around transformation, because I went from homeless to creating everything that I have now. And with the grace, by the grace of God. This was not me by myself. And so I, I hope that this inspires you to know that you can literally build your life however you want to build it. Just because someone says something like, oh, you're crazy. Like I've had, and I've posted about this on, on social media. You know, my brother would call me, you're fucking crazy. What are you doing? You're cursing me out leaving nasty voicemails whenever I left my dad's pharmacy. They're like, you know, dad could just give you the pharmacy and it would be easy. And this is the safe. I'm like, no, I don't want it. And so just to say, you know, a lot of you are probably wanting to go into entrepreneurship. You're wanting to be using your gifts out in the world. And I know that feeling. And I've been where you are, wherever you are in your journey. I've been doing this for 10 years and I've been you know, I went from being a health coach to transformation work and now helping women create businesses that are profitable and sustainable. So I, I know where you've been. Um, and so I would love to hear any questions too that you have for me. You can just type them right in the chat and I'll answer them. But, um, you know, gradually I did heal myself. I, I went through a lot of different healing techniques. Um, I got trained in hypnosis. Hypnosis was one of the, the quickest things that helped me to shift my subconscious programming of, I had a lot of just um, like unworthiness, shame around being sensitive, a lot of these blocks that, you know, I'm going to be talking about today. So the whole point of the story is you can shift, you can change, you are not predetermined to be where you are, you can absolutely create the life that you want, and I'm living proof of it. So hypnosis, yeah, it's, it's really powerful. Um, yeah, Lisa, we're going to do some tapping today too. So I'm excited for that. Okay, so let's go into some of these things. I wanted to tell you my story to give you context for why I'm so passionate and so lit up about transformation and just helping you move through some of these blocks. And so when I talk about blocks, whenever you're going to build a business, a lot of these things come up around imposter syndrome, like I'm a fraud, I can't possibly you know, go ahead and say that I'm a health coach because that's not, you're not fully embodied in it yet. And that's okay. Imposter syndrome is actually a great sign. It means that you're on the path to stretching your comfort zone. If you were just staying where you were at, you wouldn't feel like an imposter. So it's actually a good thing. Imposter syndrome, fear of being seen, um, perfectionism, all of these things that pharmacists are, were programmed with, right? You have to be perfect or else someone's going to die. You have to just put your head down and, and do what the boss says. And I'm here to, to be like, fuck that. Let, let's do something different, right? 
I'm not going to hold anything back today. And I don't filter myself. So hopefully nobody has, a, you, you put your earplugs in so that your kids don't hear me. <laughs> Be ready to dance. Good. Thanks, Todd. Um, so needed to hear this. Yes. So um, love that reframing how you look at. Yeah, absolutely. There was, um, actually, I just wrote an article for Jerika's upcoming, Jerika Dodd's upcoming um, pharmacist magazine about this. So I think that you're going to like this. No filter Friday. Yes. All right. So, um, all right. So blocks get in the way. So what's the first thing that you can do? Let's actually, I'm going to reverse this. Originally, I had us doing anchors first. I actually want to start with tapping. So tapping is a powerful pattern interrupt that you can do anywhere. And it's essentially working on the meridian system of the body. So this helps you to shift. If you have a fear, if you're like, oh, I know I have to have a tough conversation with my boss, my boyfriend, whoever, and you're feeling you know, that emotion of anxiety or you're having a fear around showing up on Facebook Live, whatever that is for you, you can do tapping and it's gonna help you shift very quickly. So you can just do it with me. We're gonna do tapping together. So the way that I do it is it, I kind of think of it like you're going around like a um, question mark. So I'll just show you quickly what it is. So you're tapping in between your eyebrows. You can even do it with me. And then on the side, side of your eye, underneath the eye, the mustache point, the chin, then you do the collarbone. I call this the monkey point. I don't know what it's actually called, but it's like, like, you know, monkey. <laughs> and then on top of your head, Rachel's shaking her head, right? Okay, so that's the that's the the setup that we're gonna do. And the way that you phrase this is even though I blank, even though I'm afraid to come on and shine my light on the summit or whatever it is, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So even though blank, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So you're releasing something and you're anchoring in, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. So that's essentially the work that I do is like release and anchor. What are we anchoring in that's gonna help you embody, not just think it like, oh, I'm a millionaire, I'm, a, I'm making six figures, whatever. Really embodying it is, is totally different than just thinking it. So let's, um, I'm just gonna pick, I'm gonna pick some of the top blocks that I see and I'm just gonna kind of go through that. So you can do it with me. It's really powerful. I highly recommend, um, you know, following along. So let's do it together. So even though right now I'm feeling like a total imposter, I'm feeling like a fraud and like, I don't even know if I'm meant to do this. People in my family aren't really supportive but I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Top of the head, perfect. So just with two fingers, doesn't have to be perfect. Even though I feel like I need to be perfect in my business or else I'll fail. Or like I can't put any content out until it's absolutely perfect. And completely love and accept myself. Let's do another one, top of the head. So even though I feel like I need to play small and hide myself in order to stay safe, because the more that I shine my light, the more I'll get judged or the more people will criticize me. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Beautiful, beautiful, good. Let's do one more round. Okay. Fear of being seen. I feel like that's a big one. Even though I have this fear that I'm not good enough, who's going to pay me for my gifts? And I'm just feeling scared. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Beautiful, beautiful. Ooh. And whenever you're done, just shake it out, shake it out. And so how you might feel after 
tapping, you might feel like you're yawning, totally normal. You might feel nothing. You might feel neutral. You might feel tingles. Like I feel like Sarah, you would probably feel because like you and I are really sensitive to energy. You'd probably feel tingles. Whatever your experience, it's still working. And you're actually neutralizing the fear when you say it. A lot of people will say like, oh, I don't want to say it because then I'm affirming it. Like, oh, I'm afraid. You're actually neutralizing it and you're you're decreasing the potency of it when you do that. So one thing that you can do to quickly release and shift, I know Lisa Zielbauer, am I saying your name right? Loves to do tapping. So um, I love it. I, I'm seeing some children on here. That's great. And, and the kids into the mix. Um, okay. So that was the first tip that I had. The second thing is to zip up your confidence. So we're going to learn some of Eden energy medicine from Angela Failer. So we have three Angelas on the summit and Angela Failer is going to be teaching about some of these techniques, but what I'm going to show you today, it's to help you, um, with a few things. So you're zipping up your confidence, you're protecting your energy you're setting boundaries so that you're not just, you know, a lot of us are empaths, so we're absorbing everybody's energy. So the central meridian governs the front side of your body. So what you're going to do, I'm not going to stand up to do this, but you know, you could, if you wanted, you're going to go from kind of near your pubic bone and zip up and then kind of like you're tying it at, at your, at your lips. And you say an affirmation, like I am loved, I am safe whatever feels good to you. So you're zipping up your central meridian. So again, working on the energy, we're strengthening your aura, your energy, really simple to do. I am loved. I am worthy. I see Sarah moving energy over there. She's yawning. Yep. And again, if, if you're feeling resistance to this, just go with it. Just again, try it on. Like you would try on a sweater. If you're like, eh, I don't like it. Cool. But at least try it. Right zip up the confidence. I feel really good when I do this. I'm like, oh yeah, I got this, right? That could even be an affirmation like, oh, I got this. I'm about to go live on Facebook. Yeah, Melissa Thompson. Yeah, I see you. She's like, oh, I like this. <laughs> Kimber, I see you two over there. I'm gonna move around and wiggle it all out after. Yeah, another way to clear energy is to just like brush, literally brush it off, right? Easy way to just, if you're coming home from the pharmacy and you're just you're feeling like you picked up everybody's energy, just like, you know, brush it off, wash your hands. You could even go like this and just kind of like create some heat in your hands. Any of these tools are going to help empower you, right? So why, why do we go to empowerment? Why, why does that even matter? So the reason is that when you, when you're empowered, it's way easier to take action in your business. Think about if I were to come on here and I'm like, hi guys, and my posture's down, right? Open up your body language, open. It's safe. It's safe for you to, to be open and to, to shine, for you to be seen. So the more you're empowered, the more likely when you get an idea, you're just going to take action on it. It's not like, I, I know a lot of entrepreneurs will come to me and they're like, you know, I freeze whenever something comes up, you know, I, I want to take action, but then something blocks me. That's what these subconscious blocks are that I'm talking about. So these are a couple of ways that you can shift that right away. The other thing you can do to really anchor in your desire, your goal, whatever that is. And I recommend be getting really clear about what that goal is. Like, do you have, you can even write this down now by mid 2022, where do you want to be in your business? even just taking a couple minutes now, you know, what do you want that to look like? Because if you don't have clarity, you're kind of like, I see it as a cloud and you're just trying to like sift through the fog. You're like, I think I'm getting there. I'm not really sure. So the more clear you can get on, on your goal and, and on what, what that could be for you and, and your desire really um, tapping into that feminine desire and allowing yourself to speak it. I, tingling all over. I love that. Um, I would love to hear, like, just put your big, bold desires in the chat. You know, this is a safe place for you. Put money goals in there. You know, we are always taught like, oh, you know, don't brag. Don't talk about money. Duh. Like, no, we're, we're busting through that in 2022. Put it in the chat. What do you want to create for your business? And then I'm going to go through, um, it's an NLP technique that can help you really anchor this in for yourself. 
So as, as I'm waiting for people to, to move through the chat, you know, to type in the chat, just write down um, what that goal is and what the feeling would be when you achieve that goal. Like, is it just like freedom? Is it, is it confidence? What is that feeling that you want from this goal? Because that's why we want things, right? We want a feeling. Is it going to be, you know, security for you, whatever that is. So write that in. Oh, um, of course, based on, Oh, I like that. Based on my book. Yeah. That's beautiful. Joy of joy. Oh yeah. Joy is a really high frequency. Um, by the end, I like to quit my day jobs, right? Business helping clients relieve symptoms. Beautiful. A lot of, there's a lot of joy on here. 50 clients. Ooh, yes. Kimber, I want to see some money goals for you. Freedom, joy, bliss. Yeah. Joy is all over this chat. I love it. <laughs> Being on the consultant. Yeah. Very rewarding. All right. Let's, let's give some concrete numbers to this too. Prove to myself here to do more. Ooh, yes prove to myself. Yes. What, Poonam, what would that give you? What feeling would that give you? Freedom from the system. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's my, so one of my biggest desires is freedom, probably because I was suppressed for so long and I felt like I was in a prison. So I'm like freedom. Yay. <laughs> so I get that. Yes. Um, so feel into how would you move? How would your body be if you were already doing that, would you be open? Would you be confidently, you know, speaking, really feel into that? And that's what we're going to be anchoring in. So when you're anchoring something, it's an NL, it's a neuro-linguistic programming uh, term that means you're doing something to solidify it in your environment. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. So visually, so I have I don't know if you saw my story, if you guys follow me on social media, but I always have, um, like I posted sticky notes. I was like, I'm so proud of you. You're a world-class healer. You have a huge heart and your love shines through your work. Like I put those sticky notes to affirm myself because so often we're looking for validation outside. Right. And so I visually say to myself and talk to myself and say, you know, this is, this is how I'm affirming my goal. Another thing you can do, um, I have a whiteboard that I write all my goals out on. Um, you can even, you know, journal it and, and write it out. Like, this is what my goal is and be really specific. Like if you want 10 K months, put it down because guess what happens when you do that? It goes on paper, your, your subconscious mind sees it. And then it's like, Oh yeah, of course. Like it becomes an of course, right? Like a certainty. And your brain loves to find the answer to things. So if you ask it a question, it wants to find the answer. So like, what would it take for me to have 10K months? And then be open, be open to the coaches that come with your way, be open to, you know, the books that come your way and just start to, to see in your environment, your reticular activating system, the part in your brain that loves to look for these answers is going to go, oh, like, you know, you've ever bought a car or like you've you, you know, you bought like a Nissan Rogue or something and then they're everywhere, right? That's your brain, your reticular activating system being like, oh yeah, look, there it is. There it is. There's evidence everywhere. And so that's what happens. Your subconscious mind starts to look for these answers by doing these anchors. So writing it out, seeing it visually. I'm a very visual person. A lot of people create vision boards. That's another way you can anchor in your desire. Um, another way is to, you know, involve the the auditory system so hypnosis meditations um you know i had my elevate membership and katherine henderson which i think she's on here somewhere i can't there's there's so many people i can't scroll through um she you know posted yesterday she still listens to a lot of those those recordings because it, it kind of like hypes you up too music can be an anchor like if you have if you have a really positive association with a certain song, like mine is like all the way up. It kind of gets your energy involved, right? So that's another way, auditory, um, sensory. Does your goal have, you know, maybe for you, you're like, I wanna be able to buy or pay my mortgage or, or buy a house that has a fireplace. And it's like, you know, I, I see myself sitting by the fireplace, warm and cozy with my dog. Like th this is my fantasy. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and it happened. It did. It manifested. Um, you know, when you're in like a really cozy sweater, like wear that sweater. Um, for me, I, I love senses too. You can even involve candles, bath and body works, twisted peppermint. That is my scent. And I have it burning right now. Involve as many of your senses as possible to anchor in this desire that you have to create this for yourself. So I want to hear, I love the other membership. Aww. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually giving away an Elevate membership for the for my raffle prize. So I'm excited for that. Um, yay, Katie's here. Okay. So I want to hear from you. What out of the things that I talked about, what's really hitting home for you? What are you going to implement in your business? What does that look like? What, you know, anchors, can you, can you get involved, you know, in your environment? Really your environment influences so much of how you show up, right? Like I said, imagine if I showed up and, and I was like, you know, I didn't like, I put on makeup, I did my hair, have a nice, like my heart, you know, like get yourself in that state of confidence. But what makes you feel confident? I was actually supposed to get a blowout and get my hair done, but we had a snowstorm, like Todd said. So I'm like, eh, it's okay. But those little things that, you know, don't cost a lot can really amplify your energy and help you show up more confidently and shine your light to make this impact that you you're really craving for yourself. So write up my goals, clear and specific. Yes. Another thing I do, Victoria, and for everybody else is to, you know, write out affirmations. Like a lot of us have kind of these automatic negative thoughts that come up like, oh, like, who do you think you are? Or like, you know, for me, I'll just be, be honest and say like, you know, I, I'm, I'm always stretching myself by no means am I perfect. I'm always, you know, growing and, you know, I have a coach and, and learning. And one of my big blocks last year was I'm afraid to get to the next level because people are going to hate me. And it was that old programming. My dad always said to me, oh, it's lonely at the top. It's lonely at the top. And I'm like, get out of my head. So that was, I was kind of in this, you know, wanting to grow, but then I don't want to be left alone. I don't want to have, like, there's always a, a negative consequence subconsciously that can be preventing you from moving forward in your business. And that was mine. I was like, I don't want to be alone. You know, I don't, I don't want people to hate me. So I had to work through that and, and move through that too. So um, love this. Any, anything else? Come on guys, let's see. Let's really like take action today. Let's, let's put actionable things down that you can do right away. What do you want to include in your daily routine? Um, that's going to help you to anchor this in. Dance. Yes. Oh my gosh. I love to dance. <laughs> yeah. Dancing actually clears your energy too. It's really, really powerful. I know Todd, I, I, I'm so grateful for him. Love the tapping. Yeah. I'm glad that Todd, you know, raised the vibration step up my meditations are powerful. I love diffusing essential oils and he's tapping affirmations, breath work. Yep. Gratitude journal every morning. <laughs> yes. Dancing. I love it. Meditation. Yeah. Yeah. Dancing, meditate, journal. Everybody loves dancing. I'm feeling that from this, this crowd. 